good guys okay so the first official i think thing from bts that i'm actually doing all of the other stuff has been sort of solo work now i understand that this is also solo work but this is apparently part of a project that bts have done together um i've been told that it's in three parts and there's uh, three rap lines from rm j-hope and sugar um now sugar we've already done rm we've done j-hope i'm still yet to do so i'm very looking forward to that um, but I'm also really looking forward to this because obviously how the the whole joke saga went um, I finally got the uh, the meaning of it in the end uh, a lot of people were I don't know either annoyed or disappointed in how I took the song in the first place but you have to understand that he was talking to, to himself but that's that's me I am a fan of rap and I understand rap before I understand any other genre of music and I feel like that's the same with RM he understands rap to its call okay so i'm hoping that i see that in this i'm hoping i see it from the beat i'm hoping i see it from the lyrics the disclaimer that i gave in the in the beginning of the rm joke reaction it wasn't because it wasn't like foreshadowing it was more because of the things that i've been told about bts army like the fact that you call it an army already sounds so aggressive change it um but yeah uh it already sounds so aggressive so Obviously, people have told me things about the BTS crew um, and about how malevolent they are. Um, so I just wanted to give a disclaimer, just letting people know that if I don't like something, it doesn't mean I don't like the artist. It doesn't mean I won't listen to their music ever again. It just means that I didn't like that particular song. And it's always my opinion based on my interests based on what i want and what i look for in a song based on nothing else but that please understand it's only my opinion and it isn't meant to influence others i hope that you all have your own mind and you make your own mind up about everything in life never never just take somebody's word for it and never let anybody else's opinion change yours okay now that we've done that let's go i'm in a good mood today like comment subscribe let's do this i've got my thinking cap on too Something tells me I'm gonna need it. I hope so. Subtitles, are we on? We're on. Yo. Nice Thanks headphones. Um, so for the for the first like few bars, I just wanted to soak in that beat for a second. So this this to me seems like a lot of people were telling me he's like the the Eminem of Korea, and I kind of understand that with this sort of selection in beat because Eminem does that. He's very like he uses a lot of rock element in his beats, and this is perfect. That sample in the beginning, perfect, set in a mood. I like the flow that he started with. Time to go into the bars now. Yo, yo. Okay, 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 okay. So, if I were answerable, if I were answerable in one word, so if you could sum me up in just one word, then God wouldn't have, wouldn't have made all of these beauties. So God wouldn't have made each individual person an individual if you could just sum them up in one word. They need to be so, so different from each other. I understand that. Come on. I even like the way that he did that. So it was like, he said, how you feel? No, how do you feel today? I feel like a lot of people, when, when we're, we're talking to like a friend or a loved one, you say, how are you? And it's just a general thing. But asking somebody how they really feel today is completely different to just saying, how are you? I feel like it's completely different. Even though it's basically saying the same thing, you sort of take it a different way. If somebody were to ask you, how are you? You just say, yeah, I'm good. But if somebody were to ask you, now, how are you really feeling today? You might answer it a little bit differently. 
And the way that he answered it was in both ways. How are you? How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm real good, but a little uncomfortable. He sort of answered it and then went a little bit deeper to show you that if you want, if you want that, that deeper answer from somebody, you have to ask that question. Hmm. Starting to see the genius. <laughs> I wasn't ready for the little for the little key change there in the flow. Come off it. So he said, um, oh god, tears in my eyes. I knew it was gonna be one of these ones. I I, I just love it when you can pick apart lyrics. And because obviously you guys have told me he is a genuine genius, I know that I can pick apart his lyrics and feel like I'm, I'm, I'm making some way into understanding the bars, you know? They're not supposed to be as simple as they are. God damn. What did he say? I feel like I'm a dog or a pig or something else. So he views himself in like a, in like a horrible way. He feels like he's less than what he is. But then people come and put the pearl necklace on him anyway. By pearl necklace, does he mean like, because obviously royalty in my country, we have the queen, but you know, rest in peace, obviously. Um, but she she always wore a pearl necklace. It's seen as something of, of, of high status to have a pearl necklace. So people are giving him the title of all of these amazing things and he doesn't see himself that way. And that's what's making him uncomfortable. Hmm. Maybe because he feels like he has to live up to that for the people that think he is that. It's very interesting. It's almost like a, um, like a Confucius way of thinking. Oh. Is he talking about is he talking about himself? Because he says one one thing says this, one thing says that. One says run, another says stop. So he says that when he was young, he dreamt of becoming a superhero, as I'm sure all of us did, especially the boys. I definitely did. I used to sit on the, on the edge of my bed and pose like I was Spider-Man. You know how he poses on the top of like rooftops and stuff? You know, like he's like knees bent, but they're like up in the air. I used to pose like that on the end of my bed and like jump off as if I was Spider-Man. Unbelievable. I'm sure we all thought we were superheroes. This guy actually turned into one later on in life. So he managed to do something that not many of us do. Um, but when he says one says run, the other says stop, is he talking about voices in his head or is he talking about people in his life? Like one person says run and the other person says stop. He is sort of having an internal conversation, so I don't think he's on about other people. So he's got like juxtaposing things in his brain telling him to do one thing and then the other. Basically, he's at a crossroads. He feels like he's at a crossroads quite a lot in his life. I could go this way, I could go that way. I could do this, I could do that. I get it. It's a way of like internalizing your own, you know, how you go through life. My God, we're only, we're less than a minute in. Come on. I'm so sorry for pausing so much. Hopefully because you guys, uh, most of the people that come to this channel, you appreciate the bars too. So hopefully you don't mind me pausing too much, so long as I am actually saying something. When he said, um, uh, one of them saying, look at the forest, and the other one saying, look at the wildflower. By that, does he mean you could look at the bigger picture, or you could stop and stare at, at, the, at the minute details, the, the things that stand out, like the wildflower? So you could choose to look at the bigger picture, which would be the forest, or you can choose to just look at the, the, the unique details in things and see the beauty in that or focus on that. Maybe, I don't know, we never know. So that's his alter ego. Well, maybe not his alter ego, but like the negative state of his mental. 
So the negative side of his mental is the shadow that he's talking about there. And it hides under stages, appearing under the stage or the light. My shadow, I wrote and called it hesitation. My shadow, I wrote and called it hesitation. Sorry, I don't edit my videos, so you're having to go through this this process with me. Um, maybe that's just, just poorly translated. Because maybe it means that he wrote to his shadow, like almost like a love letter, but called it hesitation. Almost as if he was hesitant to to even to even talk to that space in his mind that he deems a shadow, like a negative space. He was hesitant to even to even converse with it. Maybe that's what it means. But then he's saying that that very same shadow he sees under the stage or in the light. So sometimes he sees badness even where there's good. It's very, very introspective. I really am enjoying this. Maybe there he's touching on the same thing that he was touching on in joke. Basically just saying like sometimes the music makes no sense. But sometimes you're really immature when you make that music. Maybe he is talking about jokes specifically. Just saying like I, I was incredibly young when I made that. I think it was like seven years ago or something. So the guy's done a lot of growing up since then. You know? Huh. I don't, I, 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 oh, I should have looked, but I don't know how long ago this was. How long did it say? I can't remember. I must have glimpsed at it. The world's not interested in my clumsiness at all. So he's basically saying that he he understands that he has flaws, but he also understands that people don't people they're not interested in flaws, like everybody has flaws. They're not interested in your clumsiness. They're interested in how you combat that. So they don't want to see him fuck up is basically what he's saying. Like the people that love him, you guys, you don't want to see him fuck up. You're not interested in his clumsiness at all. You want to know if he is clumsy, that's fine. Everybody has flaws, but you want to know how he rises from that. Because you see him as the superhero he thought he was when he was a child. Oh my God. <laughs> The regrets that I don't even get sick of anymore. That's a bit deep. The regrets that I don't even get sick of anymore. I actually uh, watched something um, where they in somebody interviewed a man on his deathbed, and he was saying that the worst thing that he can he can go through now in his age is regret. So I suppose it's a good thing that he has regrets that he doesn't get sick of anymore. Maybe that's a good thing. Although suppressing those thoughts and those emotions, it might come to, to bite him in the end. We never know. Hopefully, he's got his mind right. You know, seems like he's got his mind right when he needs to, which is when he's got a pen and paper in his hand. Let's go. What is happening? So it sounds like the the regrets that I should have I should have obviously waited. I, it's because I've read that bar before and actually heard it. Um, I should have waited for the full bar. So the regrets that he doesn't get sick of anymore, but he's, he still tosses and turns at night thinking of them. And he does this habitually, which means it's almost become a habit for him to be doing this. Twisting the irrever... Twist... Twist the irreversible time habitually. The... 
I tumble with them every night until I get disgusted and twist the irreversible time habitually. So maybe that's a way of that's a way of him explaining that he has these thoughts, but he lies to himself about those thoughts. Because he's twisting the irreversible time. So he's twisting something, but he understands that time is irreversible. Now for him to have that thought, it must mean that he's trying to change something of, from the past. For him to have the thought that it's irreversible and for that to be a, a key component as to why he's, he's twisting and tumbling at night. And twist the irreversible time habitually. And obviously lying to yourself, being a habitual liar, that's something that that is actually I think it I think it's a psychological term, a habitual liar. So maybe he's lying to himself about the past in order to cope with it today. Which again, never good. Go see a therapist, talk to a friend, do something. Just don't suppress those thoughts and don't lie to yourself about the past. It's never good. Accept it and make sure that you're a better person today. That's all we can do. We're all human. Come on, rap monster. You can't be a monster all the time. You're only human. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna get that. The three syllables of my name and the word but that should come before any of those. Oh, it's annoying me that I'm not going to get this right now, but I, I know for a fact you guys, you guys are the fucking truth. You're going to give me what that means in the comments section. I'll, I'll genuinely be looking, scouring through the comments. Um, what does he mean by the three syllables of my name? Because I think his name is Nam June, is that right? Or is his name just June and people put the Nam in front of it? Or is his real name actually Nam June? I don't know. But then I don't know if he's on about his name, Rap Monster. I, I, I don't know. Because Rap Monster, that has three syllables. So I, I don't know. But please tell me. Please let me know. That's my fault for not knowing. Mm. Do you think you're alive? I said, uh, like many bars back, 32 bars back that this was almost like on a Confucius level of thinking and Confucius was the guy who said um, he famously pondered his own existence when he said how do I know I'm how do I know I'm a man dreaming I'm a butterfly and not a butterfly dreaming I'm a man which is incredible in terms of philosophy just to ponder that as, as a, a thought process um but he's even asking the same questions. Are you even alive? Where's your soul? Where's your dream? So what's it trick? Do you think you're alive? Oh, shit. Yeah, like who am I written I on the walls you. as well? What in the winter? Oh my god, let's go. So this is basically the other side of his mind. This is why we're in a different place. Different place? I'm sure he wasn't, he didn't have this like the curtain as a backdrop before. It was the board and he had all the writing around him. I'm sure he didn't, it didn't cut to this bit. Um, and obviously this is him saying that he, he, he was lying and he was deceiving himself, which is exactly what I thought it was. Come on, man. Don't ever, don't ever, ever test me. Don't ever test me. When it comes to bars, when it comes to lyrics, I am the fucking truth. All right. He, lo he literally looks like Mewtwo from Pokemon. That's so sick. That's so sick. I hope they make a fucking like 
mini series on Netflix about him. Using that cartoon. Mm -hmm. So he uses the music for his pain. He's been lying. Ooh. This is the barometer with the direction that I want to keep. He's talking about obviously a barometer. I say obviously, many people might not know, but a barometer I'm sure is used to predict weather. They predict weather patterns. Um, and obviously he's saying because you don't need to be neither warm nor cold. You know, you don't need to be either way. You just need to be in the moment. You just need to be present. You need to be yourself. Always. Let's go. That's a nice bar because obviously, you know, lend somebody a shoulder to cry on. I just want to give you all the shoulders when you cry. That's that's so sweet. It's so sweet. And obviously coming at the end of him sort of negatively going through all of his emotions. And then in this last part, it's almost like he's not only accepting those emotions, but explaining that he is still going to feel these emotions. He's still going to be negative, but he has to do that in order to give you what you want, which is the art. And the art only comes from his emotion. So he needs to experience all of these emotions as they come naturally and organically in order for him to produce the music that he does. Come on, man. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. This is what music is about. I just want to go. I just want to fly. I just want to give you all the voices till I die. I just want to give you all the shoulders when you cry. Persona. Who the hell am I? I just want to go. I just want to fly. I just want to give you all the voices till I die. I just want to give you all the shoulders when you cry. Persona. Yeah, damn. That what? dress you swore you'd wear. That dress you swore you'd wear. Well, that was that. God damn. Well, if I didn't, uh, if there were any bars that I didn't catch, then please let me know. But I think the last 20 minutes, all the pausing that I've done, I think, I think you might be hard pressed to to find any. But obviously, this being my first reaction, when I go through this again. It will be with the lyrics because obviously I want to understand I want to understand the, the pairing of syllables as well which is something that I'm very interested in with Korean rap especially because for for an English word that's very that's very short or for a bunching of English words there's only one word for it in Korean but it's quite a long word but even though it's quite a long word it's quite an easy way to say it there's quite a lot of letters in your word that in in my language wouldn't be there those those letters would be taken out and the word would be made shorter um yeah it did just that part that part especially um it intrigues me about your language or about the language of korea because obviously you guys aren't all koreans that are watching this um but if you are then ugh, incredible you don't even have to wait for a subtitle that's insane that whole song is music for me, that's what music is about. He explained it perfectly. In the end, you have to go through all of this badness. You have to go through all of these emotions, whether they are good or bad. You have to go through them. This is why a lot of artists, they sort of lose touch and they lose touch when they become the superstar that the fans make them out to be. They become that and they don't do normal things anymore, which means that they don't have normal emotions like people do. And, and then that's that's no longer in their writing. So, you know, people can sense that from a mile away. Um, but RM there telling you that, no, I need to go through these emotions. I need to be a human. 
I know you guys think that I'm a superhero, but I still need to stay grounded. Wow. It's amazing that he can do that, especially with the plethora of fans that he's got, that he can still remain grounded. But obviously with this being the basis of it, like him knowing that he needs to stay grounded for the music and him needing the music to stay that superhero status, it almost everything just goes hand in hand. He's got it perfectly patterned, perfectly patterned. I wish more artists from, you know, this side of the planet could have that mindset. I really do. It feels like a lot of a lot of artists over here, they just care about the money or the status or... But he doesn't even care about the status. He's actually questioning the status itself. Like, do I deserve this? When I see myself as a dog or a pig. Insane. Obviously, um, I'll be doing more from him. But before I do, I want to go into uh, the other two tracks from this sort of series. Uh, so I'll be doing my first ever J-Hope reaction and then the Sugar one, I think, or is it Sugar and then J-Hope? I know that they go in order. Somebody commented and said that they go in order. So I copied and pasted that and I'm doing them in order. Um, I would do the other two today, but my brain hurts. So <laughs> thanks very much to you guys for putting me through my paces there. Um, I love when reactions go like that though. When I, when I do, it does make me think a lot. And it makes me question not only the artist, but the artist's intention. And then it, it genuinely makes me dive in deeper to the lyrics. And, and then I start to formulate my own opinion about what this artist is and what they represent and what their music might sound like outside of this. It's just great for me personally. That's why I made this channel. You know, I get excited about these things. So thank you very much. It's been your boy, Teddy Gray. Deuces.